Farmers have been seeking better ways to manage their nitrogen, and Pivot Bio has the solution to this decades-old problem. Proven is the first in-field microbial product for biological nitrogen fixation delivered as an in furrow application. It's an innovative new technology making a difference in the way farmers feed their nitrogen-hungry crops without compromising the resources of the future. Good evening and welcome to Rural America Live. I'm Marlon Bowling. Making sure your crops are getting the nutrients they need is always a challenge and a top priority for farmers. And we know you will have questions about the product that we're going to be talking about tonight. Well, joining me tonight is Product Development Vice President Ernie Sanders, the Director of Agronomy, Dr. Dan Poston. And we know farmers like to hear from other farmers. So we have Randy Dowdy here to talk with us as well. Gentlemen, thank all of you for joining us. I appreciate that so much. Uh, good to have you on board. Dan, if you don't mind, maybe you can kick things off and give us a little background about yourself and how you got to work with Pivot Bio here. Well, thank you, Marlon. Um, I'm really a native of the East Coast, so I grew mm -hmm. up on the coastal plains of South Carolina, really in the heart of the flu-cured tobacco belt. Got two uh, ag degrees from Clemson University. He decided to take a, a little break from school, taught high school ag uh, for four years. So I'm an old ag teacher as well. Um, uh, finished up my education shortly after that uh, at Virginia Tech with a degree in plant physiology and weed science and then spent almost a decade working uh, as a soybean weed scientist and agronomist with Mississippi State University at their Delta station in Stonewall. Uh, Got an opportunity then to go to work for Pioneer Seed, uh, where I served as an agronomist and uh, an agronomy research manager for Pioneer. Uh, had a great decade there. Uh, and then about a year and a half ago, got a chance to go to work for Pivot Bio, which you're going to hear more about tonight, and uh, a lot of the exciting things we have going on in the microbial space. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming in. Good to have you here with us. Ernie, how about you? Oh, thanks, Marlon. Glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up on a farm about two hours from here. My older brother, Tommy, still farms there. Uh, Somerville, Tennessee is where it's located. We had corn, cotton, soybeans, pigs, and cows. And then I went off to university and got a degree in ag science, got degrees in chemistry, and then started a 38-year career. Yes, I know, a long time. 38-year career at Monsanto. <clears throat> and then after Monsanto, while, while, while I was still there, I met Karsten Timmy, who is the CEO of Pivot Bio and was totally intrigued by the science, intrigued by the mission the company had, and got super excited about working for Karsten. Intriguing stuff indeed, and, and we're gonna talk more about that in just a second. I do want Great. to introduce this gentleman to my left here. Uh, hardly needs any introduction for a lot of folks. Randy Dowdy joining us, uh, world record holder. Uh, thank you for uh, coming in and talking with us about your experience uh, on the farm and also with using this product. You actually used it, didn't you? We did. And uh, tell us just briefly about uh, your experience here getting to be the world record holder. Well, God bless me, number one. I know from where my blessings have flown, grown and where they come from. And I don't need to be reminded of that. But, you know, we got started out early, uh, reached out to a lot of good farmers and a lot of people shared some information with us. But we try to be a student of the crop and understand where yield is captured and where yield is lost. And we've asked a lot of tough questions of industry. We've asked a lot of tough questions of universities and different people. And we've made a lot of mistakes. We've, we've learned a lot from our successes, but we've learned, I think, more from our failures. So uh, we're done with corn. We're able to be here tonight. We were able to harvest our corn and we were able to get through. And now we're, we planted that back in beans, and Amazing. <laughs> we're, we're through with the beans, uh, <clears throat> getting them planted and sprayed, and now we're, you know, we're kind of in that, what's next mode? And right. We're getting ready to start harvesting beans, hopefully next week. Yeah, it's so. an amazing, long-growing season. Yeah, really long. Uh, all right, Ernie, tell us about the company. How did they get started in this? Well, if I could, I'd like to go to the end and tell you that what right. Pivot Bio Proven is doing as a company, and Pivot Bio as a company, has brought a new source of nitrogen as a solution for growers so that they can spoon feed their nitrogen to their corn plants on a daily basis. Now, how do we do that? Where did it start? It's, it's, a, it's a fun story. Our CEO, Karsten Timmy, went to the University of Iowa and uh, as he finished up his degrees there and went on and got postdoc degree, uh, his PhD and postdoc degrees, he met a lab partner who's Alvin Tamsier. 
And between the two of those guys, they talked over a hypothesis of how could they harness the power and reprogram biological products to bring nitrogen to corn crops. And that's what started the 2011, Pivot Bio was incorporated as a company. In 2013, the nitrogen science was reaching the level where we could start going to the field. Then we've been going to the field every year since then, and we launched Pivot Bio Proven, our first generation product, uh, three years ago. So ever since then, what we've been doing now is continuing to do additional research and get super excited about the product that we have out there. Well, synthetic nitrogen has been around for decades already, but how is it that microbes can go to work and help replace part of that? Yeah. So that's a really good question. You're right. Synthetic <clears throat> nitrogen has been around forever. And without synthetic nitrogen, we'd have a lot of starving people. Synthetic nitrogen is fed uh, probably more than half the a growing population in the world. It's a very complicated situation in my books because synthetic nitrogen is part of a yield equation, but they're also, I, I kind of relate it to my arthritis medicine, right? I need to take it for my arthritis, but sometimes there are side effects that are maybe not as uh, enjoyable, but it relieves the arthritis pain, right? And synthetic nitrogen, even though what you get inside that plant gives you the potential for greater yields, what you apply to the ground can sometimes get to places it doesn't need to be. So you have the side effects of the dead zones, or you have the side effects of nitrous oxide as a greenhouse gas. So you have some of the other side effects that are not as beneficial for the rest of the world. But overall, synthetic nitrogen is still a very critical part of farming. All right, so uh, we're looking at a graphic right now. Uh, Dan, maybe you can explain what we're looking at on this particular visual here. Well, um, Ernie, Ernie touched on this. As you think about uh, really the fate of nitrogen in the environment or the overall nitrogen cycle, um, when we apply synthetic nitrogen uh, to the soil, a couple of things are going to happen to it. It's almost immediately going to be changed into a nitrate form of nitrogen. And that form is immediately available to plants, which is a good thing but it's also very mobile in the soil. So if it's a sandy soil, it uh, has a potential for leaching, it has a potential for running off. If it undergoes periods of extended uh, flooding or saturation, then it actually becomes a gas in the form of nitrous oxide and denitrifies. So we have multiple mechanisms of loss to the environment. And as a, a nation, probably of all the nitrogen that we apply, about 40 to 60% of it actually ends up in the plant. So uh, we've worked hard as an industry to improve nitrogen use efficiency and, and be better stewards, but we have a long way to go. And if we can, we can find a way to reduce dependence on synthetic nitrogen, uh, that's really what uh, Pivot Bio is all about. So I'm curious, how did you discover this microbe anyway? Well, think of it kind of as um, uh, a microbe scavenger hunt, if you would say. Uh, there are a lot of bacteria out there called diazotropes that uh, have the machinery to fix nitrogen. So think of it as hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of soil samples, and you dig through those soil samples to actually find the microbes that have the machinery to fix nitrogen. And then at Pivot Bio, uh, we make those microbes better at what they do. So not only do they fix enough nitrogen for themselves, they actually fix enough additional to feed the crop. So I understand, uh, of course, you apply this mainly in furrow, correct? That is correct. So if that's what you do, you can't really see what's going on down there. And I, I understand you actually put together a little video that explains we do have a how video. it works, how it's put on, and, and how it works. So let's take a look at that right now. Pivot Bio has introduced a new microbial product called Pivot Bio Proven that captures nitrogen from the air, converts it to a form corn can use, and then applies this nutrient directly to the corn plant daily. This new product consists of nitrogen producing microbes that are applied during planting. Once the seeds and microbes are together in the ground, the roots have immediate access to the Pivot Bio Proven microbes. As the seed germinates and the roots reach out into the soil, the microbes adhere to the root structure, capture nitrogen gas from the air, convert it to ammonia, and feed it directly to the corn roots. Pivot Bio Proven microbes are not washed away by weather events, nor do they volatize into the air, which makes them a reliable nitrogen alternative to maximize yield potential. 
leading to less dependence on synthetic nitrogen. Interesting stuff. Dan, if you, if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you about that. This actually uh, colonizes, as you say, on the roots themselves, correct? And uh, how does that actually spread throughout the root system then? So um, we, with this microbe, the, the microbe really needs to be in uh, physical contact with the seed so that when the root comes out, um, the, the bacteria are right there to colonize the root. As the roots grow, uh, they produce root exudates. Exudates contain lots of chemical compounds, including carbohydrates, uh, organic acids, lots of different things that uh, the roots can provide to the soil microbiome around the roots. This microbe uses those carbohydrates as a sugar source, and then in turn, they fix nitrogen from the atmosphere in the form of ammonia, uh, and they live and colonize on those roots. So as the roots grow and expand, the, the microbe grows and expands. And, and that growth really follows the growth of the corn plant throughout the growing season. So as roots are actively growing, producing new roots, uh, producing root exudates, the microbes continue to increase and multiply. And then when the roots begin to decline, uh, as you get further into reproductive development, they're mature, they decrease the amount of exudates that the plant is making, uh, then the microbe populations decline as well. So, so think of microbe growth following the, the growth of the corn plant throughout the season. So I want to turn to Randy here for a second. Randy, you actually used this product this year, correct? Correct. What, what led your interest in that? Well, I was a little skeptical in the beginning. Um, Everybody wants to come and use me use their products on the farm. And some of the things that I've seen with different microbials, it's been hard to duplicate and repeat. It's so hard to understand which microbes are in balance or which microbes are out of balance. How do we understand that? Where can we get it tested? We believe that nutrients need to be in balance in the soil and in the plant. So should microbes be in balance in the soil as well and in the plant? How do you look at that? I think that's the future, but how do you look at that? So I was a little skeptical. I said, sure, we'll try it. We'll see. And Dan and I go way back. We know each other from the quest to make 160.6 bushels beans or greater. And, you know, let's see how well we can do. And me and Dan, when he was with Pioneer, worked together a lot. And I knew that he had left there and went to work for Pivot Bio. And he came to me, so my guard was down. I knew that uh, you know if he came to me, my cross. I knew that if he came to me with something that uh, if he believed in it enough, I probably should try it. And that's what we did. And that's one of the things that I encourage farmers to do to, is to get out of their comfort zone and be willing to try things and try your best to understand the science behind it. And one reason that I'm here is we made 12 bushels more with this product, and we had a grand scheme and a grand plan, Dan, of you were going to be the researcher on my farm, and you were going to be the guy that took all the tissue samples and compared them with and without, and you were going to be the guy that was going to take take the leaf full plant analysis and take the pictures of the leaves and the plant, just look at the whole spectrum of why and tell me a report at the end of the year, and then COVID-19 happened. So Dan, Ernie, no pressure. That's why I'm here. I want to ask the right questions. I want to ask you to why did we get those 12 bushels? Where did that come from? So that ought to be an interesting uh, discussion <clears throat> as we go forward in the program. Just for a point of reference, in case our viewers aren't familiar with you, what kind of a corn yield have you cranked out? Oh, geez. Um, I have to be very respectful here. Um, people probably know David Hula. He's mm -hmm. the man. Uh, I'm, I'm always, if me and him's in the contest, my money's on, con on David in that contest. We made 503. We're the first guy to break 500. Wow. That's about the only, um, I guess, niche I have, feather I have in my hat to tease David about. But he was the first guy to go to 616 for sure. We've made up to five, I think 553 or 555 on corn. And I guess the most notable thing now is we got 190 bushel soybeans. So, My word. Yeah, and we really? hold that record. So. And this is on sandy soil, right? Well, on some of it, them? You, you have to define sand. Nebraska calls some of their soils sand. It's not. Uh, <laughs> Michigan calls some of their soils sand. Uh, some we, of those are. Uh, yeah, we call ours what you lay on the beach in, right? <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Really um, tight. Yeah. 
it, it's very coarse sand, and uh, it's you know no water holding capacity or nutrient holding capacity virtually at all. So that God made impressive. it. God made it. We can work with it. We just had to learn how to do that. And and just to reiterate, you said you came up with a twelve bushel yield advantage using this. Correct. Well. Uh, we analyzed the data. We did a control with and without, and uh, we did that. And we had our guys within next level. They can uh, analyze all that data, and I'm pretty, they know my standards pretty tight. Um, and it's an absolute comfort of 12 bushels. Um, 12 bushels was a big deal. My guy that was harvesting this, that works for me, Nathan, I mean, he harvested and he says, Randy, there's something happening here. He says, I think it's close to 20 bushels. And I said, man, you can't see 20 bushels on the yield monitor. We'll let it see what the data, the data says. And he didn't miss it by much. I mean, it was a constant 12 bushel response across the whole test area. So we're, we're excited to see if we can duplicate this and see if it's something we can see in the future. I know you're an extremely curious guy, and hence no. why you're asking <laughs> these guys why it did what it did. Yeah. And we want to uh, delve yeah. into that uh, as we move forward in the program. So we have all kinds of stuff to talk about. And we know that you have questions about using a product like this. So if you want to be a part of our program, uh, we have our phone lines now open. There's a toll-free phone number you can call. This is it. Jot it down. Grab a pencil right now. It's toll-free, 877-731-6733. Again, 877-731-6733. You can be a part of the program and uh, find out what the secret is as far as how uh, Pivot Bio Proven has worked on Randy Dowdy's farm and how it could work on your farm as well. So there's a lot to talk about. We'll take a break right here and we'll be back with the gentleman. Welcome back to Rural America Live. We are here talking with the folks from Pivot Bio, and we're talking about their nitrogen alternative product. It's called Pivot Bio Proven, and it's a very interesting discussion. We're so glad you're here with us. There is a toll-free phone line. You can call in with your questions about this product, and the toll-free number is 877-731-6733. Again, 877-731-6733. Seven three one six seven three three, and the phone lines are already starting to light up. So if you don't mind, uh, we'll go ahead and take a call. We have Kevin on the line from Iowa calling in. Kevin, thank you for being a part of the show. What's your question? Well, thank you for answering uh, my call. Uh, my question would be: um, I know I like to have the pivot bio in furrow. Um, I do. Use 32% injected in spring um, with colder and stuff. Is there any way it could do something like that, or is it possible to put it on with spray or early post-emerge with anything or any other ways? And if, if not, what what system do we need to put it in for? Dan, you want to tackle that? Um, Kevin, right now, um, the, this, this microbe has to go in for a... Uh, needs to be in proximity to the seed so that when that uh, radical or root emerges, um, the, the bacteria can colonize that root. Um, we also have to be careful what we mix this with. Your, your higher salt uh, nitrogens, you mentioned 32%, um, uh, that's the, they do not mix well with the microbe. In fact, uh, those really high salt caustic uh, fertilizers that tend to be uh, side dressed, um, that tend to be side dressed um, are, are not uh, compatible with the microbe. So when we mix in for a, it tend, tends to be your lower salt products that are designed for in furrow that typically go in furrow with the seed that don't cause salt injury. So um, right now, in furrow is, uh, is the way you have to go. So when you order your fertilizer, how do you specify that? I mean, do you just go into any dealership and say, I want your low salt? Fertilizer. How do you go about it? Is there a certain uh, uh, percentage ratio that you would prefer to see used with this product? Well, as you might would imagine, uh, everything under the sun gets mixed with in for our recipes. Uh, and uh, what we tend to do is we try to identify those products. We run compatibility tests for those products and then give recommendations back to the growers of what to, what's okay and, and what to steer away from. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we actually have another call on the line. And uh, oh, just uh, one Sorry. second. Go uh, ahead, Ernie. Could I build on what, uh, yeah, what Dan was saying ahead. there right away? And actually, what, what uh, Randy was saying earlier, too. Um, if you want to talk about purchasing Pivot Bio Proven, we have a dealer net network, dealer rep network that you can get to at pivotbio.com okay. and find your nearest rep. But uh, where I was headed with that is this stewardship of how to handle a biological. And I know Randy said earlier that uh, sometimes performance in biologicals varies around. And we want to absolutely positively give this product the best chance to perform mm -hmm. because it is very predictable and very productive when it's handled right. Because we're taking a living, breathing biological and putting it with a living, breathing seed and putting those together. And we want them both to be better than they are sure. individually, right? So I think that uh, as we move forward, we've actually built a rep network and a delivery system where we deliver directly to the grower. Okay. So that therefore we can have all the information we need about what works well with our product and what may or may not is a reference. And we can deliver it very close to your planting <clears throat> date so that it will be a fresh product and it can be stored and handled in a proper way. So it has the best chance of getting into the ground on that seed alive and be able to perform the way. Yeah. And this is date sensitive, correct? I mean, it, it, it's viable for a certain period of time. Yes, most biologicals do have an expiration and they do have some sensitivity around temperature storage and all of that's really well spelled out. So uh, thanks, Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One go ahead, Randy. Of, one part of the question that he asks is what's the best way to, to deliver? And there's a lot of delivery methods out there yeah. that you know some people are using to actually put it in the fur the way you want. Um, I've heard people use totally tubular. I've heard people use the Keaton seed firmers, etc. The trials that you've been doing, what has been that method? Direct stream in the in the trench? Does it need to be on the seed? Does it need to be in the sidewalls? Does it matter? When you talk about proximity to the seed, how close is close enough? Um, the, well, uh, all of the above to answer your question, Randy. I mean, we, we've, we've tested this thing with farmers all over the country. We've gone directly to farmers on, on large scale acres and, and they're mixing everything under the sun. They're using every type of seed firmer and delivery access. As long as it's in the trench with the seed, that's probably close enough. Mm -hmm. but, but the closer we get it, the better it's gonna be. We have another call on the line. We have Jerry calling in from Ohio. Jerry, what's your question? Well, I think you've already answered it. I wondered whether you could mix it with your starter fertilizer or if it took special equipment that you pretty much covered it with the first question. Absolutely. Well, uh, and that is the question, the number one question you probably get all the time. I yes, and, and we get feed, feedback constantly from our sales reps and directly from farmers that I'm mixing with this. Is that okay? And if we have that information, we give that back to them. If not, we collect samples of that and we run, we run further compatibility tests. So we're constantly feeding back <laughs> information to the growers to help them determine uh, uh, what to mix with their fertilizers. As a matter of fact, I've, I've got a phone call uh, message right now from a grower that's ordering his starter fertilizer and he wants to know if, uh, if he should order a, a certain blend of fertilizer that either, either contains this micronutrient or not. And we'll advise him on, on kind of where he needs to go in that, that situation. Well, if I remember correctly, you had some of those must do's or don't do's on the label too. That's as correct. to what products you that you guys have already figured out that you can't apply it with and you probably should steer away from. So That's there, there are just a few things you mentioned before we came on live that uh, maybe are not compatible. But uh, one that comes to mind uh, first off the top is uh, can you use it with fungicides. Uh, fungicides. Uh, we screened a lot of fungicides already, and usually it, this is a bacterium. So usually most bacteriums are safe in most fungicides, and, and, and ours, uh, ours is safe with most fungicides that we've tested. So fungicides right. should be no problem. So we have another phone call, and we have John on the line right now. He's calling in from Ohio as well. John, thank you for calling in. What's your question? John, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, if, is this a life-changing additive does it have potential down the road to say reduce half of the actual nitrogen we add to corn or is this just an additive that's going to maybe 10 or 15 bushels the acre what what's a limit I know you don't know yet but what's a limitation 
in the future on this because we don't put nitrogen on uh, soybeans. Is this going to have that kind of potential? That's my question. That's an excellent question. We were yeah. talking about that just a little yeah, bit ago. I, of course, we love to answer that question because our mission as a company at Pivot Bio is to replace synthetic nitrogen. Right now, today, with Pivot Bio proven, it's around the equivalent of 25 pounds of nitrogen per acre. We're continuing to do research in our labs. We're continuing to bring our pipeline forward of products that we're working on. And we continue to upgrade that, and we want to launch more products that have uh, more production in the future. But right now, this first product is the equivalent of about 25 pounds synthetic nitrogen per acre. So this is a biological product. Ernie, what makes it different than other biologicals on the market right now? Well, uh, what, what this product initially does as a biological is that it has, like we said, the machinery in it to take nitrogen out of the air, make ammonia, and feed it directly to corn roots. That way there's nothing that goes into a deleterious manner either in the water or the soil. The second thing that we've done is that these bacteria are, are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. They're called diazotropes. And these diazotropes that are in the soil today, they used to do this all the time as a wild type, right? And, and what happens is when we started applying 150 to 200 pounds of synthetic nitrogen per acre on top, then the microbes are like, well, there's plenty of nitrogen. I don't have to make any more. And that's a very high energy cost for the bacteria. So they just stopped doing it. So what makes our product unique is we went back and we, we woke up that ability again for this microbe to produce, and we have it such that it produces ammonia on an everyday basis, and it's kind of like spoon feeding that corn plant a little bit of nitrogen every single day. And since it sticks to the roots, even when Randy has a 10-inch hurricane rain come through, it's not really washing it away because it's still stuck to the root system and still continues to have that symbiotic relationship on the outside surface. It is not like bradyrhizobium in soybeans. It doesn't go inside the plant. It doesn't create a nodule. You would not be able to see it if you dug up the root system. That's a good explanation. I'm glad you clarified that. So Randy, yeah. we're piecing together your answer slowly <laughs> as we get through, and, and, and we'll, tr we'll try to answer your question as we progress tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, I wanted to pick on you next. Uh, of course, you've done tons of research. And this has been going on for quite some time. What did you find out when you first started using this uh, proven product? Well, um, I'm, a, I'm a year and a half into the company, okay? So, so my first real experience was uh, the 2019 growing season. Uh, in that 2019 growing season, uh, we, uh, we really relied on a lot of third-party testing through, uh, through our partners at Intent to Pivot Farmer Trials. And so these were on-farm trials, um, structured trials, big block trials, digitally harvested. And, and in those trials, real growers, uh, we, we were almost seeing about a six bushel yield response on average with uh, uh, an in excess of 70% win rate, so meaning that they had a positive response. Uh, in addition to that, we also began in 2019 partnering with major land-grant universities. Uh, interestingly, the response of uh, those trials uh, was about six bushels per acre. So on average, that this product's delivering about six bushels per acre um, uh, yield response uh, when added to a nitrogen management program. Ready for another question? Sure. Here we go. Let's go back to the phone. And again, if you want to be a part of the program, uh, join us toll free, 877-731. 6733 if you want to join the program and uh, offer a question to our panelists here. We have JR calling in from Illinois. JR, thanks for calling in. What's your question? Well, my question is um, I have used the product this past year, and actually we just used water as a carrier and was using it with uh, uh, three gallons of carrier. So my question is, is there a possibility, possibility in the future that you could use a lot less water so you wouldn't have to fill up as often? Good question, what do you that, think? That's a very good question. And um, the, the volume of carrier right now does not seem to be a big issue. So three is certainly enough. Most people are applying three to five now. We, we began some research this year 
uh, with a system called Enlighten, where we're trying to get the actual volume per acre with the microbe in solution down to less than a half gallon per acre. So, so we're working on that uh, to answer the caller's question, and uh, I think we can uh, I think we can get that volume down because it really doesn't take much uh, of the microbe. I mean, even the use rate right now is only a tenth of a gallon per acre, so uh, suspended in the carrier volume. So, we're hoping we can get that down, and you can cover a lot of acres with a little bit of solution, uh, especially if we go to a smaller dedicated tank for your biologicals. Well, and like you say, once you have it near the seed or on the seed, it will colonize out and expand, exactly. multiply out and, and cover the entire root so system you, anyway. So, so when you talk about thing. it being on the seed, my logical thought process goes to a seed treatment. Yeah. Uh, how far are we from having that as a possibility? Well, we uh, certainly see the benefits of a seed treatment. We want to bring it forward as fast as we can, and uh, Dan's doing a lot of research on that now, along with the rest of uh, Pivot, so we're hoping well, I, don't, I don't know exactly when, but as soon as possible, we want to get into that. But right now, it, you know, it is the Inferro product. There is a significant amount of Inferro uh, equipment that's out there. And as Dan mentioned, we can also help with our Enlighten program to broaden the, the, in, the Inferro applications for people who are interested. All right, great questions all the way around. So kudos to everybody so far. And again, call in toll free if you have a question, 877-731. 6733. Now we have Billy on the line now calling in from Texas. Billy, thanks for calling into the show. What's your question? Yes, I was wondering with the Pivot Bio proven, what is it when you uh, rotate crops? Does it affect or help other crops such as soybeans or whatever else you may plant? Another good question. What do you think? You want to tackle that? I can tackle that one, sure. All right. So uh, Pivot Bio Proven, the microbe that we have, we've kind of got it cranked up like it's on a uh, treadmill because it's making ammonia on a daily basis. It's feeding it to those corn roots every day. And what it does is it's, it's, it's staying alive and feeding off of those corn root exudates. So when the corn roots start to die off after tasseling, you know, they just become a straw to suck up water pretty much. And as you get to R5 and later in the season, there's no more food for the microbes to live. And they're still on the treadmill. They're still trying to make ammonia every day. So then they start to die off. So we have not been able with our technology to find our microbes the next spring. So if there is a carryover situation, we are not aware of it. And we have looked for it in the following year crop and haven't found them. So that kind of does beg the question. I guess you kind of answered that. If it expands throughout the entire root zone and the roots will go really deep, for example, on corn, will any of that carry over and survive through the winter into the next year? Apparently, at this point, it does not. Well, if it does survive, it would carry over through the winter. It's below our level of detection as a company. We take soil samples. We take root samples. And we have the ability, since we've uh, worked with this microbe, to actually take it to our labs and identify this particular stain, strain out of all the trillions of bacteria that's in the rhizosphere and microbiome that's there. And we have not been able to find it to the level of detection that we're capable of getting to. Okay, but the research is ongoing. <coughs> Always. <Exactly. laughs> Ask right, any wait. scientist. Right? <laughs> let's go back to the phone and we have Sheldon calling in from Ohio. We're so glad you called. Thank you, Sheldon. Uh, what's your question? Uh, there's a company called Circle 360. It's uh, founded by Greg Sauter. He makes an attachment to put onto your planter that will squirt the, as soon as the seed is dropped into, into the furrow, the, it squirts the pop-up right onto the seed. If you have that attachment, do you only need to use basically a third of the amount uh, per acre because you're not putting a constant stream down there, you're just putting it on, on the individual seed? Interesting. Any, any thoughts on that? Um, in theory, perhaps. Uh, we don't have the data to really say one way or the other at this point, so um, I, I would stick to the, the labeled rate right now until we know more, but that's something we, um, pulse injection is, is something we definitely have on the radar screen to be looking at. So I would imagine you'd be very interested if anybody tried that, though. Absolutely, and, and, uh, and please send me your results, your results if you do. So, um, you know, with that being said, um, 
Uh, this is a perfect time to thank Randy for trying our product, but also uh, hundreds and hundreds of pr uh, farmers across the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. that have really uh, been willing to, to take that leap of faith. And yeah, I'm going to try this biological, even though they may not have had good biological experiences in the past. And not only have they been willing to, to, to try it, they've been willing to share their data with us, to share their information with us, to answer our surveys, to, to let us know how they're using it, how they're mixing it, how they're applying it. So, so we've learned right along with these farmers. So a big thank you to all of our customers and, and the folks that help us really develop this product on a daily basis. It's a two-way street out it, there. It very, much, very is. much is. So can they find contact info if they go to your website and they can get in touch with uh, maybe your agronomist team or something like that to uh, so the bio like com, You can find your local dealer reps. And okay. you can, there's a whole lot more information. There's a lot of uh, grower testimonials. There's a lot of other uh, video <coughs> that you can see. And, and even a place where you can contact just to ask additional questions. And, and, and they're ideas. more than they're more than willing to, to to email me directly. Dan at Pivot Bio, pretty easy to remember. So um, I'll be glad to try to get back with them and direct them to my agronomy team as well. Awesome. We have another call on the line. We have Keith calling in from Arkansas. Keith, thanks for calling in. What's your question? Uh, my question is: Is the product labeled in all states? And if not, is are there plans for it to be labeled? Labeled. All states. I think we're in all corn oh, growing states now. Yes. It is not labeled in Maine, I think. No, wait, Natalie would shoot me. <laughs> I think it's not labeled in Los in, in uh, Nevada. So I think so, that's pretty much the only state it's not labeled in. We'd have to we, we'd have to double check, but most all major corn growing states yeah. we we're, we're we're labeled. Full in. Proof, yes. Do they grow corn in Nevada? I don't think so. So that's why we didn't bother labeling it there. That could well be. Man, we've got some great questions already. Keep them coming. Now, that toll-free number, again, if you want to write it down, 877-731-6733. We're going to pause for a break right here. We have more to cover, and you're welcome to call us back here on Rural America Live with Pivot Bio when we come back. Welcome back to Rural America Live with Pivot Bio as we discuss an alternative to nitrogen fertilizer when it comes to your crops. And we know you have questions. Our phone lines are open, but boy, they have been busy. And the experts with Pivot Bio are waiting to take your calls and answer your questions live. So here's that toll free number once again, 877-731-6733. In fact, we have a call on the line right now. We have Jeff calling in from New York. Jeff, thanks for calling in. What's your question? Uh, I'm a sweet corn grower here on, in New York, and I'm wondering how that Pivot Bio would work on sweet corn and also some other vegetables. Interesting. All right. We'll take it. How about yeah. that? It is corn. Your turn, probably. My time? Sure. Um, Jeff, um, we're labeled on all corn, corn species as, as a crop, so we've got some experience in popcorn and, and mostly field corn, uh, some silage. Um, we should basically have the same effect in sweet corn that we see in, in field corn. That's correct. And we can talk about, you know, what some of those visual observations are as we go through the night as well, if we need to. Uh, before we get too far into this, I know we've been waiting to hear the answer to Randy's question earlier in the program. And uh, Randy, you were asking these two gentlemen early in the show about your 12 bushel increase in <coughs> yield on your farm this year. And your question was what? Well, I'm a guy that likes to understand the science behind any result that we have. And if I can understand where that yield is captured or where it's lost, I feel like that I can repeat that, that success more likely going, on, going forward in the future. Unfortunately, you know, I'm a guy that takes tissue samples every week. I want to understand all these things. I thought Dan would be doing some of that. COVID-19 happened. We didn't have the pictures. We didn't have the tissue samples on these trials. I didn't have the plant health before and afters throughout the season and all of that. So my question is, we made 12 bushels. It was reality. We did it on two different varieties in that plot. We did it on 15 inch rows. We did it on 30 inch rows. And we averaged higher yields than the control that was exact. Opposite, just not have, exact same thing without having the product. 
So we had a good control. My question is, what do I need to look for going forward? And what is my strategy so that I can understand where this yield is captured? We can't see colonization on the roots. We can't see a you know, nodule like a soybean has. So what do I need to look for going forward? I understand, you know I'm going to put pressure on you to be there this year. <laughs> you just have to wear a mask in the field, right? <laughs> um, but I'm going to put pressure. I want to understand the why. And I want to understand based off, we can't really look at what my field was like at this point. But you have done a bunch of research. What are you seeing where the guys have been doing the six to eight bushels that response that you've been seeing? I've heard you say some guys have better response. My sandy soils, my, you know, lack of organic matter, et cetera. Why are we making this yield? What have you seen? Well, let's, let's, um, we've already talked about kind of where we're averaged nationwide. Around six bushels is what the average is for a response nationwide. So let's, let's back up and, and, and begin to talk about your environment, which is not everybody's environment. So, so, so the field that uh, Pivot Bio Proven was in and your field was a deep sand. And when we say sand, we mean you don't even see the word loam in any of the strata strata description till you get 90 to 140 inches deep. So if you put nitrogen in that system, it's going to move. Not only does nitrogen move in this system, some of your semi-mobile nutrients like potassium, uh, potassium moves a lot even in Randy soils with those low CECs. So um, if I recall in our conversation, Randy, you, you were looking at three applications of nitrogen this year. You were looking at a pre-plant application uh, roughly a V10 application and then kind of a VT application with the, with the second two being put on through the pivot for a total of about 250 units of nitrogen. So uh, plus uh, any effects of uh, manure applications that you've made. So, so adequate nitrogen for your yield goals, but the, the fact remains is that that nitrogen is still mobile. Not only is it mobile when you apply the nitrogen, even in ammoniacal form, in ammonia form, it rapidly converts to nitrate. So I think a lot of the benefit uh, to this microbe, Ernie has touched on, it's, it's attached to the roots. It's fixing ammonia, so an, ammonia, an ammoniacal form of nitrogen there, so you have really a mechanism to keep that ammoniacal form in the system longer, season long, and, <clears throat> and supply that form directly to the corn plant. So if you look at what we typically see uh, for visual observations, you're gonna see a growth of your plant earlier sometimes. So you're, if it's there colonized, you're gonna see it by V6 as a, a lot of times a larger, greener plant. You're generally gonna see a larger root system. Um, and um, and so people will ask us, well, how do you measure it? I'm gonna just go out there and pull a tissue sample. You and I have talked about tissue samples at length over our careers. <laughs> um, and the fact of well, the matter is that tissue sample uh, doesn't always tell the whole story. Yeah. So we focused uh, a lot this year on what we call whole plant sampling. Not only do you get the percentage, but you get the biomass and you come up with a pounds of nitrogen per acre that's captured by the crop. So that's kind of our method of, of really detecting what the microbes doing. Sounds like we have a bunch of calls stacking up. Uh, we actually have Reggie calling in uh, from Texas. Reggie, what's your question? Well, we're in a heavy clay soil, high pH, and we want to use this product in with a, a uh, dosatron application that actually injects this product with our starter fertilizer at planting time? Is that acceptable or how do we apply the product? I would say we've had the dosatron question a couple of times. I can't tell you definitively that it will or will not work, but, but theoretically it should as long as uh, any of the pumping mechanisms don't damage the microbe physically. Right. Um, so I would say that's a maybe. All right, we have Roger calling in from Wisconsin. We're doing rapid fire here. Roger, what's your question for the panel? Go ahead, Roger. Yeah, would this qualify uh, uh, organic, unorganic, growing corn? You see, we have not received, uh, we haven't even applied for an OMRI approval for organic. So this product right now today is not considered organic. Be approved. 
All right. Uh, we also have Brad calling in from Illinois. Another good question. Uh, Brad, what's on your mind? What's your question? Okay, I'm, I do not have a starter system on my planter. How can I apply this to my field? Very, very, very good question. Uh, we actually have an incentive program uh, that will help farmers actually put equipment on their planters, uh, you know, with, a, with an agreement over long term. So uh, we, uh, we, we help folks get there. We also have another phone call. We have Mixie on the line from Texas. Mixie, what's your question? Hey, I, you're talking about corn. I was just wondering about other tubers like hay, uh, possibly uh, coastal, coastal bermuda, that sort of thing. Hey, what do you think? So um, we've really looked at this on on corn. We've looked at it a little on wheat. We have a product called Pivot Bio Return that we've launched in wheat. Uh, we've done some testing on sorghum and a little bit of testing on rice, Mark. but. We haven't really worked with hay. So I just, I don't have a good answer for that right now. We've mostly really focused, uh, it's still early for this launch product. We've really focused on corn. All right, uh, uh, I did want to ask you about, you have a kickoff event that's actually coming oh, up yeah. uh, in the near future here. And I wanted you to explain that while we have just a minute here, if you could, and what's involved in that. So this Wednesday, uh, it's just two days from now at 5.30 Central Time. It is our kickoff and a webinar. You can go to pivotbio.com. You can uh, search for our webinar. You can sign up for it there. Uh, it's our kickoff for the 2021 season already. So we're getting started early. We're having people. Uh, there's, we've got, uh, actually, Randy will be uh, uh, on that as well. And uh, we have a full panel of some of our senior leadership team. And... Uh, we, we're just really excited about where we're headed and what we're doing, and this big kickoff is going to start off this Wednesday night. Sounds awesome. Well, Dan, you've been on dozens of farms this year, and you've got to see how it works. What have you found out? Well, um, we're very optimistic this year. Um, uh, it's not been hard to walk on farm and really find the treated areas where this microbe uh, resides or where it's been applied. Um, we've documented that with some whole plant nitrogen numbers, uh, some biomass increases. So, so we know that this thing is, it's growing a bigger factory most of the time. Uh, it's increasing the overall nitrogen harvest per acre. So, so we, we know those type of things. Uh, so we're hoping that um, the, the crops have an opportunity to capitalize on the things we're seeing. We have uh, another phone call. Brian from Missouri calling in. Brian, what's your question for our panel? Uh, yeah, you, you indicated that the, the net benefit was roughly uh, six bushel on average. And I guess my question is, you know, what's the cost? You know, if you're going to put the cost in, in a bushel, are you giving up a bushel towards cost? Or, and, you know, how does that kind of factor in? Good question. So the, again, the webinar this Wednesday will be the kickoff. It'll be all the pricing. It'll be all the incentives. It'll be everything that's involved with it. So, and I forgot Max Armstrong will be there too Wednesday night. So I wanted to mention that. Just by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, please uh, come listen to that, sign up for that. There, there's two ways that people have been using our product. They're, they're seeing it as um, they can reduce their nitrogen and put our product over the top and yield the same as if they had reduced 25 pounds, or they can put our product over the top of what they do now because nitrogen programs are very difficult to maintain. And we're seeing that on average at least six bushel increase. But it, it, it's more than just the 25 pounds. It's really, it's weatherproof since it's there. It's very predictable and it's very productive. And Randy always talks about ROI and we see this product as delivering on that ROI for growers. Well, and that provides a segue to a question I had for Randy, and I'm glad you're here. You actually have a premiere coming up before too long uh, where you're gonna have your own show talking about management tips for yep. growing corn. And uh, is it just corn or is it other crops too? Well, I won't say it's my show. Uh, me All and right. David Hula All right. have joined so together. Both of you. Yep. And we teamed up with the Gosh family, and we're doing a next level farming show. It's supposed to premiere, I think, the October 1st is the first episode. It'll be 26 episodes. Uh, we will try to teach people to ask the right questions. 
anybody that's heard me speak has, and I've even alluded to it tonight, uh, there's a difference in asking the question, but asking the right question. And we have teamed up with Mickey, and we're trying to learn some new things, a way to do things, try to teach old dog new tricks, so to speak. Pretty tough in the farming world to teach a farmer to want to be open-minded and receptive to doing different things. And we will be chronologically showing our thought processes throughout the season when mm -hmm. we started this process and all the way to harvest. So we're going to have 26 episodes. Um, we're look, looking forward to it. You get to hear King David, David Hula, tell, you know, great tidbits of information just to understand the way he thinks you get to hear me and david kind of banter back and forth well, i don't know if we should quite do it that way or <laughs> you know and we'll see who wins right and <clears throat> in the meantime we get some good questions from mickey of why are we doing this at all and we try to teach people you know kind of what's happening and we wanted to we've been a part of another show and we wanted to make this one very educational and be able to teach farmers and non-farmers alike you know, a little different aspect of the way we go about trying to make money, make farming profitable, and to still be able to be sustainable. So. And maybe that'll be a, a series where you can actually show using some pivot bio yep. proven. Well, that's one good thing about what we do is that we will be vetting this on the this particular farm in Omaha, just like we are vetting it on our farms. We're going to vet new concepts, new thought processes, new hybrids new varieties, new micronutrients, biologicals, you name it. We will be vetting it and testing it and showing some of the results throughout the year. And so that would be a, uh, I guess, a uh, not a live testing, but at least a, a way to be able to show, here's some of the things we're looking at, here's some of the challenges we have, and here's how we're going to address it, and then to be able to show those results at the end of the year. I can't so. imagine anybody that wouldn't want to watch that if they want to know how to improve yep. their yield potential. Yep. Uh, don't miss Randy's new series. It's called Next Level Farming. It will be premiering Thursday, October 1st, like he said, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time <coughs> and 8 Central right here on RFD TV. And it will be on Thursday and Saturday as well. Uh, real quickly, before we wrap up, Ernie, I want to go back to you. Um, I'm sure there are tons of questions that we couldn't cover on the show here. And you have a website Absolutely. where uh, the folks can go to and learn more information about this. How, how would you direct them? Pivotbio.com. Pivotbio.com. And yep. can they communicate with you guys through that? Absolutely. Uh, Dan gave out his email address. Mine is Ernest at Pivotbio.com. We're still a small company. We just use our first names and then and at Pivotbio.com. And your sales event kickoff is going to be when? Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Central Time. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having all of you come in. Uh, I appreciate it so much, Ernie and Dan. Good to meet you and uh, talk you. with you, you as well. well. You're welcome back anytime. And uh, Randy, the welcome man is always out. If you want to come back, we wow. want to learn more. And we'll see you on the series, too. You'll be a big TV star now. Uh, well, so we, we look forward to that. <laughs> we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to sharing information. And we've been very successful. God has blessed us. But I always close out every meeting we have. God's been really good to me. And I've always been the author of my crop production success, but God's been the finisher. He's blessed me, and I know where that comes from. Well put. Well, thank you for being a part of the show tonight. Appreciate that very much. Randy Dowdy joining us. Well, we thank you for joining us as well. Uh, right here on Rural America Live, we look forward to talking with you next time. In the meantime, have a good evening from Rural America's most important network. <laughs>